Hi, and welcome to Pine Tribe's video interview, this time with Christian von Hornslet. Welcome, Christian. Thank you. We've known each other for, for some years, even though we haven't seen that much, but uh, I, uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to, to catch up with you and hear a bit about what you've been, what you've been on to, because you are quite a spectacular artist, I think, an individual. <laughs> And um, maybe uh, in your, in you, you know, in your own words, you just tell us what what's your big passion these days? What's your big project? Well, um, after a few years in um, in London, where I stayed and where we met, uh, I'm back in Copenhagen, <clears throat> and I'm restarting my old system over here. And I'm right now I'm very focused on opening a new gallery, actually, uh, uh, because uh, I'm not satisfied with the way. Art is being sold in Scandinavia, so I'm trying to make a new gallery called Friends, Hornslet and Friends, and uh, the idea is of, uh, to to invite all kinds of strange artists I have met through the time and let them take over the gallery for a month here and there, and then uh, create kind of an artistic friendship built not on career, but built on uh, artistic value or artistic content and, and friendship more than this typical career cultural capital industry bullshit you know it's so much uh, the art world today is very very uh, money driven and you know it's not all bad but you know it's a it's it's a reaction to the system okay yeah and uh, i i think you you've been through a very interesting journey the first time i heard about you i think the first time a lot of Dan danes heard about you uh, was when you got the uh, the people living in a in an african village to take your surname isn't that correct Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you're probably sick and tired of talking about that story, but this time we might have a, a, a U.S. audience that, that, that maybe haven't heard the story already. So maybe you can just tell us a little bit about why why you did it and what what that was about. Well, basically, I um, I um, I went to Uganda. I met a, a, a Ugandan artist and a Danish businessman in Uganda, and I always had this idea about. Uh, Commenting on 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 how the, the the hypocrisy between the West and the, and the African the starving countries, we all have this bad consciousness. You know, when we were kids, you know, you, you should eat your plate because the people in Africa don't have any more and many food. I, and actually, it's always always been nagging me. So why don't you just solve the problem? I mean, come on. And uh, so I had this idea that uh, to expose the absurdity in this, I went to Uganda and I persuaded together with my friends down there a whole village to change their name legally to Hornslet to my name in exchange for what was it 300 livestock animals and they were really like what why and uh, but but you know uh, they went along with it and when the the animals arrived they were really amazed because nobody thinks of these people they they're not really starving But they have no money. They can't afford the bus ticket to the, go to Kampala and get the free um, malaria medicine. So, in a way, I'm. Later, I was told it's something that this process, what I'm doing, is called imminent criticism. You know, it's kind of you are acting as you are part of the evil team to promote a certain discourse. So, what I when 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 hundred people now have Hornslet in their ID card on their birth certificate or. It, it, it is kind of quite uh, irreversible, and and uh, I like the fact that an art piece is not just something you watch in a gallery and then you go bye 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 and have a cafe latte. You know, this is for life. This is real, and it's real. Is it art? I don't know. <laughs> no, because normally you, you you paint pictures, right? You uh, you make paintings. W wouldn't you say that have been? No, I, I think the... it, it, to look when I look back the last 20 years with my work, I, I I've been. Uh, It's kind of divided itself in two uh, lanes. One with this big, um, almost like feature film size artworks have their own websites. This years they go, <clears throat> they they go along. And then I have these sporadic, smaller works like this one here, which is uh, like one entities of small pieces on the road. But but uh, two things like big projects which are which I follow up and, and work on for years and then these smaller things so more or less parallel and there is a connection but it's it takes a, a few hours to explain I guess yeah yeah because you've do, been doing so many different things and this project in, in Africa that a lot of people felt was a bit provocative but you're saying you, you did it for an agenda that's you know that's, that's overall positive it uh, always it always begins with yourself yeah 
It's very personal. And yeah. then it becomes public. It, it, it begins with my own idiosyncrasy about how the West is treating the, uh, all the whole hypocrisy about it. Yeah. Later, I did a weapons company. Yeah. And, uh, and, la and then later again, I, I did a, a, a re-enacting of the Columbine shooting on a Danish school, just as an, as an happening, just to show them, you know, this is not something you read about. This, this happens in the real world. And you can use art as a vehicle to discuss and to have a discourse on, about, uh, on these issues. Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember when I, we asked you to, if you wanted to make a, a, a sponsored painting for a charity dinner we did. Uh, I don't know if you can remember it, but <laughs> you made a, a picture where you, with big letters, uh, painted uh, the rich destroy the world. And we have invited some of the some of the uh, wealthy people in Denmark, mm -hmm. and this guy who made the biggest donation, he got the the the, the, the painting with him. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it was uh, quite funny to to see uh, look at his face. Uh, yeah, and the, the the funny thing is that there seems to be a, a kind of a under mutual understanding between very intelligent, very rich people, most of them who made their own money, of course. Not the inheritors, but but the, the people who are, are doing businesses and doing projects, they know that the system is partly rotten. You know, they know it, and they don't mind being uh, reminded that it's it's not as it should be. Things around it's and and nobody seems to ask questions why anymore. It seems like we all kind of just doped away on our iPads and our Spotify and our houses and we don't give you know, there's no really there's, I don't feel in society very much interest in, in, in asking the question why so what, what, what is your vision uh, vision then for the world uh, that's something you're frustrated about clearly or at least something that, that I'm, you I'm, think could I, be different yeah I would say uh, normally people say oh you just do things to provoke and la 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 but yes I am I'm provoked when I see something in the newspaper give me a time new, uh, Newsweek magazine or German focus or whatever, and I have I'll, I'll make ten paintings of it. I, I'm I see stuff which it's like, why is this happening? Why is nobody reacting on this? And I, I'm just a little artist in a little country in a little city here. And what can I do? You know, but I can express myself, and maybe this uh, expression will dilute into some crazy politician's mind one day. And and and, and how would it be? How would it be better in in your view? Uh, because you know you could say that it's it's easy to criticize and it's more difficult mm. to come up with a solution. And yeah. I just want, you know it can still be okay to criticize if there's something wrong, right? But I'm just wondering if you have also a vision for how you'd like to see things develop yeah. in, in in the coming decade. Of course, uh, if you take the Africa project, uh, it, it in its own absurd way it has it has some sort of solution imminent to it, like. Uh, what 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 happened after our project was that Danish um, help organizations made it possible for normal people to buy a goat or a little house directly to the people on the ground. So what we did for an uh, as, as a as a crazy example, you take you have to change your name to our name, and then you get a cattle. You don't have to go through a a big organization where eighty percent of the money is lost. And you see only white Range Rovers with African politicians driving around throwing candy at the people. It's 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 crazy. I've seen it myself, and I'm I'm not really a freedom fighter or anything. I just I'm just asking questions. Why don't you just solve it? You know, my men, my next big thing would be to solve the Middle East crisis. That's really a big one. Yeah, that's really a big one. Do you have a plan? Yeah. I can't tell you now. No, it's not too dangerous. Now. Okay, I'll interview you in a, in, in a year's time. When, when I'm in jail, you can interview me again. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I'll do that. I, I'm, I'm wondering because in, at Pine Tribe we talk a lot about personal growth uh, mm. and happiness, or at least you know good life quality. Uh, and, and I'm wondering, can you see a path over uh, the course of your own lifetime where you have been have you been through some, some personal development? If you should kind of look at it now from from, from where you are now in in, in your life. Uh, what do you mean, like in, artistically or, or, or personally? I mean, or? Per personally, like are, are you a happier person now than you were 20 years ago? Or is it going, you know, is it becoming more and more difficult to, to you know, to, to be you? Or what, what do you feel about it? Well, spontaneously, I would say um, I can't really answer it very, 
very re rewardingly. But but I, I would say that it seems like that it's become my life has become more uh, uh, easy on the one hand, but also complicated. It's like two volumes bottoms; they both turned up. It's getting more complicated, but also easy. I have more access to do stuff, but I also have more uh, obligations and more financial uh, battles. But when I solve them, I, I have more action space. So it's not like the problems is, is, uh, are smaller. If I'm more happy, uh, definitely I'm more happy now than I was 20 years ago because I really couldn't look through structures. It takes a lot of time to to uh, see through the, the, the very complex stru complex structures of, of, of doing uh, activistic art or making art in itself to trying to decipher what art really is. And it seems like almost... Uh, that old story about you know Kafka, you know, with the castle when he waits the, his whole life to get into that fucking castle. When he gets in there, there's nothing. He just goes out on the other side. You know, <laughs> there was it's just a facade. You know, that's how art is, and that's also kind of in a recognition, acknowledgement of, of things. So, um, I don't know if it's a very clear answer. Do, do you use art uh, as a way to uh, to grow personally, or has that nothing to do with it? Uh, I think. Um, Oh, of course, uh, a lot of people ask this question: If, 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 what, how, how do you do art, and wh what is it? And uh, I think you're born with it. I mean, I, I didn't really choose to be an artist. Uh, I, uh, I, I think I was 12 years old, and I, I had this urge to put things upside down, like change the cassette player in my father's car, and suddenly he would listen to it, and and I would somehow have been recording on my 12-year-old. Uh, cassette tape deck and I would somehow made that the, that there was a snowing in the summer and the queen was ill and somebody got shot and I and he said what's this and try to make think people wake up and make them think about that's been a big issue and I was all I was also uh, thrown out of the school newspaper because I wanted to have a, a whole page full of lies so I, I it was in me I always thought that I became an artist because my father and mother had a, a, a very rough divorce you know 11 years old and who am I in this great world nobody loves me blah 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 <laughs> then you can seek yourself inside and then you start to do your scribblings and take it out on the world no 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 my my sister said here uh, not so long ago no no you were always crazy it's not like uh, because I made a whole series of painting called "Broken Homes Generates Art." You know, the more you fuck up people, the greater art they do. It's not true. It's the uh, it's really just a born DNA thing. I think to be interested in having a dialogue with your surroundings, very a critical dialogue. Yeah, yeah. So w w so when you when you take on those big topics like uh, an unjust world, for instance, with, mm. with the Africa project. Um, do you do you do do you feel that it becomes easier to be you afterwards, or do you feel that you are kind of getting into a place where there's more frustration and where it's where it's difficult to stay happy dealing with such big topics, or is it kind of easy enough for you to go in and out of that and just go home and enjoy some nice time with your friends, or are you in in a way still stuck in that feeling of an unjust world? And how how, how do you deal with that? It's again. It's a question of uh, being in some kind of of uh, equilibrium with what you do. I, I felt when I did the Africa project that I suddenly was invited to to talk at all kinds of uh, charity organization, and they weren't interested in my project. They were interested in listening and learning how to get in the media. Okay. <laughs> so I, I learned a lot about the backside of of the help industry. Yeah. Uh, the whole charity thing, uh, the whole thing of uh, p making people pay to get a, give them a better consciousness. So that's why my project was really, really about uh, calling, a, as we say in Denmark, a spade, a spade. You know, what is it really the problem here? The people don't have food, you know, and they don't have money. They have a corrupt government. You know, what can we do? Give them some animals, make them breed give half the animals to a, a central pool and every time these animals breed you take half the the, the 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 animals and give them to new families and when they breed half the family half the uh, the stock livestock animal goes back to the pool it worked for a year but then they had some you know problems but it wasn't communism it wasn't socialism it was fair play and now that's what i just think about and yeah. and uh, of course i learn that uh, I learned uh, that uh, that I um, 
you you feel uh, acknowledged and you feel uh, there's a recognition in in, 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 in in this process and you feel happier yeah you feel happier because you 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 know more you can say and you could sit down and say okay I'm, I'm super depressed I couldn't change the world in one year I'm sorry no it was really about uh, I obtained more valuable information and uh, it it opens just 20 new doors to even more complex problems but again I'd rather be smarter and have more information at hand, and uh, then I, then I've, I, yeah. To answer your question quickly would be yes. I am um, the more information, the more happy I got. Yeah. Okay. And then you moved on to 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 other to other stuff, right? Yes. You hope you hope to uh, give the, uh, the the torch to the next guy in line, so that they can. So in a way, the best critic an art project can get is that it's not from some bullshit art historians you know it was from real normal people saying yeah why that's funny that you can kind of make a, a performance about poverty and now you 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 made politicians and you made make normal people uh, ent enter and and they they buy a goat or a pig and and and, and this pig goes directly to uh, to the people I'm not sure that was only our benefit, but it was we inspired this process and built it up in in, in its own absurd way. That's what art can do. Yeah. And uh, and one one of the things you did afterwards is that you uh, own or at least have put your name on a bar in Copenhagen. Isn't I I, be, I I was one evening at a bar and then I you know noticed that it was it had your name on it. So yeah. <laughs> what's what's that about owning a bar? It seems a bit. Uh, a bit different, at least. From yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's my own little battle with the with the uh, corporate culture art world. You know, I th I think uh, when you go to I don't know if you go went to a gallery opening and you have this cheap white wine and nobody says anything. There's white walls and <laughs> you have to feel in a certain way. It's like being a you know in a church where you don't belong. You know, it's and so I thought the, the, the atmosphere of communication was was not really adequate. So I met these guys who wanted to do a bar, and they asked me if I wanted to be involved. And I said yes, but only if it's a, 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 a gallery space. So what in the bar, you'll have 200 art pieces, and we change them every year. So when people go in and drink and have a good time, they also see uh, everything, what I, what I do, represented in photographs. And, and, and so they can they don't have to... Drink their brain out. They can learn something while they drink. Okay. So it's it's a it's, it's a push and pull thing. Okay. And also a way to make some money. Hopefully one day. It's not you know it's a it's it's difficult, but it it, it runs okay. Yeah. I I'm, I'm grateful that I'm not really running it. It's a professional company. Okay. Yeah. And and, and on the note of, of of making making money, I, I last time we met, you were you were living in London, and. I, I I remember from then that you talked about also the kind of the financial side of being an artist mm -hmm. and that you wanted to maybe go out in a in, in in a bigger scene where it's possible to make more money. And now we're talking again, and and you're back in Denmark. So um, what 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 uh, what's been going on there? Well, I came uh, to London in 2009, and I had a whole suitcase full of money with me, and I said, okay, Denmark is small. The amount of people who has the interest and money to buy art is quite small. So you need a, either to do something which is more for the masses or you need a bigger clientele. You know, when you start out as an artist, you don't think about that it's like having a bakery and then you make a bread and you can only sell one bread to that guy and you never see that guy again. It's like it's not like paintings wear out like clothes or anything. It's, it's it, These things you have to tell young artists that... You either need to have a, a part-time job, or you need to have the world as your market. It's not. It's very, you know. It's and you're very lonely in the whole process. There's a lot of things which not, uh, which which you don't think about when you start out and you, you throw yourself into this uh, art thing. Uh, it can be very rewarding, but it can also be very frustrating. Well, in London, I uh, I found out after a few years that. Uh, Different things. I uh, my art as such, the language, the, the 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 visual language, was too much for the British. They I found out they already have a lot of uh, political issues and problems and social problems, and they have poverty. They have, they have a whole other game than we have in little spoiled Scandinavia here. So they don't want crazy uh, swearing frustration in their art. 
like the Danish people, they 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 like to have a, a, beside their nice Bang and Olufsen stereo. They nice to have a big hornslet painting telling them "fuck you, art lovers" or something crazy. With the Danish humor, can take it. But I found out no, the British, they, they, what the ones I met, they 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 want something that reminds them that they're uh, the more meditative stuff, more clean. You know, probably the artist Damon Hirst, mm. he, who has some very rough subjects. But when you look at it. It's also very shiny and, and polished. And even though it's very dark subject matter, death and so on, it looks aesthetically like a perfume uh, boutique, you know. It has to look slick. So, uh, so the cultural language was very different. On the other hand, I, I did some shows and I met some very interesting people. I, I miss it a lot and I would have hoped to stay on because when I left in '09. I really thought I didn't, never should go back to Denmark. I thought I would go on to America or China and just stay out in the world forever because I thought my art could be a vehicle to live on like a raft. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> with, the, with the amount of money my, my, my wife spends and, and, and refuses to work and all these four children, I, 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 you know, it's, a, it, it's, it's another kind of balance. Yeah, so you went back to Denmark where you yes. were famous and where people liked you art. Yes, you 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 need to uh, probably uh, uh, cultivate that garden you already grow in, of course. And uh, a very very intelligent guy in London uh, worked for Sony. He said, uh, "I know what you should have done. You should have bridged over to London with uh, uh, Danish products who are already which are already sold in in Britain. You have to go with that information stream." And I, it's got too technical for me. You know, I paint, I sell it, I piss off people, and then I go to bed. That's mm. my life. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we can make it. We can make a test. We can try to uh, together with this interview because now you're making some claims about the the British people <laughs> based on some experience you have, and then we can put up a, maybe put up one of your pictures up beneath the, the interview and see if uh, someone wants to buy it. W- would that work? Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. And How much you, do you take? <laughs> you, you decide that. <laughs> we don't take any commission. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and, and the, the latest project you've been doing it has, I think, uh, it, it, it's a very global project, right? Uh, Maybe may, may doing something even more recent than this, but I'm thinking about the Marianas uh, Trench project where you lowered uh, four, d- DNA from 4,000 people uh, into the the ocean, uh, the deepest place you could find, uh, in a kind of star construction, uh, for uh, I would say other civilizations to find it or yeah. future people, whatever that might look like. Uh, can, can 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 you tell about your motivation to do that project? Because I know that it's been something you've been working on for years, and that was actually very demanding. Oh yes, it's a. Uh Right now we are in the stage where the documentary film is being uh, edited and hopefully we're done by July and then we'll go into Danish TV and probably some film festivals. That's the plan at least. But, you know, four years of work. It should have taken one year, four years and legal battles and friendships and money problems and crazy, crazy shit. But that's also in the film. So I'm very, very uh, enthusiastic about the film. When is it it released, the film? Uh, Hopefully this summer. Um... July, August, we don't know yet. Okay. It's 400 hours of footage put down to one and a half hour. So, you know, they have their... But they, yeah. the, the editors are giggling away in there. <laughs> <laughs> and why did you do it? Uh, it was... Um, I got very uh, inspired by the other projects I did, like these uh, like global, uh, international, uh, big issue uh, stories. And, 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 and if you can say very roughly that the Africa project is about ethics, how we treat each other, and then the weapon company I did, the Hornslet Arms Investment Corporation, uh, it was about how we kill each other and the whole weapon industry. And then I did the, uh, the Columbine shooting project. And, uh, and then uh, I had this idea about eternity. I'm, because, again, personally, I feel it's horrible that we have to die. And if you're an atheist, how do you solve that problem? And uh, and I said maybe it's time to make some kind of tribute to the um, to the human race and, uh, and make a sculpture containing the DNA of people. 
and uh, people randomly collected around the world, traveling around and talk to people about eternity and uh, and interview them and make a film and make the sculpture and and uh, create a sense of hope in this very atheistic world. Uh, atheistic, uh, it's very Richard Dawkins controlled world, which I I favor a lot. I know I, I'm not religious in any way, so. Um, just playing with the big elements and, and and creating some sense of hope for these people. And I, in the process, it was so strange. We got, we had a do-it-yourself kit because we couldn't travel all over the world. So people from India, Brazil, uh, South America, they were sending these uh, small pieces of uh, DNA in our do-it-yourself kit. And, and I think 600 of them, these letters were pouring in. And uh, there is some kind of... Uh, mutual hallucination in this what if they find this stuff in in 2000 years what if yeah. we don't know if it's not possible to regenerate people we don't really know if the cells have a human have a memory to create brains maybe there's a subcellular atomic level i'm quite sure there's not but you know who fucking you know you know it's it's a, it's so fascinating and the whole process and it's more like a almost like a adventure travel into sp- time and space and uh, and also yeah i could talk to hours about this but the, the i needed to do something which was not always you know hard as criticizing brutal this was more like a poetic side which i yeah. also am very fond, fond of yeah yeah i can definitely see um, it's less it doesn't provoke anyone in 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 no. in, 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 in a way Mm. Uh, it gives more hope. I, I can definitely see that. Yeah, I'm only it, sorry that I didn't get to send you my DNA, but I will. Uh, I, I will have to figure out something else, so another pla- safe place to hide it. I, th- I think you answered yourself exactly like your last question. You think you have to figure something else. Hopefully, our project can inspire other people to do other stuff. Uh, again, we're not solving anything. We're just raising certain questions, and uh, uh, and and hopefully that inspires other people. I think that's the best. Uh, chance of uh, of a result you can you can have i mean i think it, it's also it, it's a combination of a science project and an art project isn't it uh, yes. in a way like last month i was invited to the log in festival the the the, the, the high tech convention in lithuania in vilnius to talk you know besides people from uh, apple and there were people from uh, um, uh, you know, Singularity University, and they, all these high tech people were giving talks. And then I came with my my star sinking into the ocean. And uh, uh, I think there's uh, I I don't know. I'm not so much into this area, but you can really th- sense that there are, there's there's a new opening towards crisscrossing these different uh, uh, themes. You don't have to be a computer geek. And you can't, and 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 only to li- to to understand computers, and so you can crisscross around. You can do art. You can do music. There, there seems these guys like twenty five years old, and they don't give a shit what subject as long as it's interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's typical Wired magazine crew. These guys who they talk about anything as long as it's interesting. It could be art, science, charity, whatever you want. I love that. Could, could you feel a difference in yourself by doing this project that is based more on, on hope than anything else? Did, did that make you particularly happy or did it just feel like any other projects uh, to you? Well, um, I, it, it was so stressful then, then when the star finally fell into the ocean and on that boat middle of Pacific, I just collapsed, you know. I was very happy, but so tired. I just fell asleep right on that that boat. It was so horrible, horrible, difficult to get the crew and the money and the boat and the traveling and the whole setup. We did a a, a twelve meter steel star in Denmark over in in West Denmark called Weile. There's there's a copy or a sister sculpture, as you say, on land, which tells the story of the one in the water. So all this was like what. 250,000 pounds spent on that thing over there and yeah, I love it. I love the crazy anarchy of it, but I'm, um, you know, it's 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 very rewarding and uh it's uh, every time I do a project it's more and more difficult to get back on the horse because you I feel that I already lived five lives. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so interesting. So I'm, I'm yeah. you know, I'm, I I also have this idea that 
you can be so fulfilled and that you that yet you don't really this is very very homemade psychology but if you get so fulfilled with your work you will not be afraid of dying then you have achieved something and i'm working on that i think everything all art is about compensating for some complex freudian bullshit and then you 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 take it all out on the people and they have they have to buy into it and they can look into your it's, it's like scientific results they you know you you you're doing all your your different companies and your charities and so on and you don't have time to paint maybe if you painted you would be the same but you can just buy some stuff, st stuff from us and then you can get quicker into my world like i would buy into your world to learn, know you we can't do all i just chose this area of working because it suits my temper yeah. and uh I think it's really a, a, a long travel to, 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 to get some kind of getting back to zero. So when it boils down to it, are, are, you, are you mostly creative or confused if you had to choose one of them? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, creatively confused. <laughs> CC. <laughs> that's a, that's a, I think that's a, that's a, mm. that's a great place to, to end this talk for now. And uh, I enjoyed it a lot, Christian. Thanks so much for, for taking part. And I hope the the viewers will too. And we'll put up a up a one of your pictures just for the okay. just for the experiment of it, and see if, if if we can get someone from from the UK to buy it. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Take Bye. care.